All righty, good evening. Welcome. My name is Hadith Drakeford, your director of Time for the NCDA. But for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Registering LLC, a live streaming company that has recently turned into a media company. We serve our customers in the DMV region, that is DC, Maryland, and Virginia. The last time we actually did something regarding to the NCBA was back in October, Towson, Maryland. And um, I gotta tell you, man, it's good to be back. It's good to be back on the road, and it's good to be back doing commentating. It's good to be back doing live streaming. You know I mean? Tonight, we actually have the pleasure the privilege and the honor to actually do a tournament preview. That's right, tomorrow is going to be the first East Coast tournament in 2022, and we will be traveling up to Penn State University for the Happy Valley Tournament. All right? Penn State will be hosting, and they will be having JMU, Towson, and Maryland, and attend. We can't wait. We got a lot of cool things that we want to show you guys, but we might have to wait until the tournament tomorrow. All right. So with that being said, go ahead and turn this music off real quick, and let's get right down to business. All right. So the tournament will start tomorrow on Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. Going to be two courts. Um, Court one is going to be JMU versus Penn State at 10. 11 15, Penn State versus Towson. And at 12 30, JMU versus Towson. All right. And then on the second court, all right. On the second court, it's going to be Towson versus Maryland at 10 a.m. It's going to be Maryland versus JMU at 11.15 a.m. And it's going to be Maryland versus Penn State at 12.30 p.m. All right. So with that being said, we're just going to do a very quick rundown of each game. We're not going to make any predictions whatsoever. Really more, we're just going to be talking about, you know, what each team should probably be expecting, what are some strengths and weaknesses, and how would they probably win the game if things were in their favors, all right? So again, not too long, but just, you know, something real short and quick, straight to the point, all right? So in court one, we're going to have JMU versus Penn State. Now, these teams have only played against each other once this season. And Penn State got an upset win against JMU. And that was back in October. Again, they only have played once. Since then... Penn State record has been five and two. JMU, on the other hand, has been three and five. So right now, JMU is currently coming off of a three-game losing streak, which they travel to Ohio University to play at the JBBB tournament, um, and they had a very difficult schedule. So, you know, both teams early on this season are trying to make statements, all right? Penn State is currently trending up. JMU is surprisingly is trending down. And that's very awkward for me saying that because I'm from VCU, and JMU has always been the standard within the East Coast for the longest time. In fact, JMU, with the exception of Towson, they have only lost three times to an East Coast opponent. That would be Maryland first, and then, of course, Towson, but they lost to Towson multiple times. VCU, and then Penn State, in that particular order, all right? Like I said, with the exception of Towson, they have only lost to an East Coast team three times, all right? So, with that being said, um, both teams do like to play fast. And they like to play aggressive. And both of them are extremely athletic. Um, in terms of throwing power, you can say that they can match each other toe for toe. All right. 
Um, for JMU, you know, some of their star players going to be Captain Drew Funk, um, Assistant Captain Jake Marsh. Of course, we got one of the best players from JMU history, Evan Essenbor, also coming in on board. Uh, we also got another Assistant Captain Ben. Um, but don't be surprised about my man, James Turner. Do not be surprised. My man is an athlete within himself, all right? And do not be surprised about Andrew either, number 37. He can cause some serious problems. Like I said, JMU from top to bottom, very talented and very athletic. Um, some of the criticism around the league, though, is they don't know how to play strategy. And again, these are not my personal feelings. These are not my personal opinions. This is what the league, from the e-board to the content team to other teams around the league, really feels towards JMU. So JMU could get the advantage if they can find a way to really capitalize on the mistakes of Penn State and really make some timely catches. And they can easily do that by being very aggressive early on, pushing Penn State to the back line, and then forcing Penn State to make long throws. All right. Now, on the flip side, as I turn to my page real quick, Penn State only lost twice this year. They're 5-2. and two. Um, Currently, the second best team on the East Coast, JMU, the third best team on the East Coast, Towson, the number one team on the East Coast, and I would say Maryland currently right now is the fourth best team on the East Coast. It's based off a of record. Um, they only lost twice. They only lost to Towson twice. And both of those games have been by one point each. Um, we got head captain Christian. And then we're going to have the brothers. My apologies for not being able to say your last name. But we're going to have Barry and Zachary. And then we're also going to have Mason. Um, I've only seen Penn State once this year, but from my interaction with Christian, who is uh, your dodgeball of the month in the month of November, actually, nope, my apologies. Pretty sure that was October. My apologies. Um, he was telling me that his team was extremely athletic and they like to play extremely fast. So they're one of the faster teams in the league. They are one of the more athletic teams in the league. And they have no problem pushing the tempo. They really, really, really want you to feel uncomfortable. And it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Uh, I feel like one of the things that could kind of get into their way is, excuse me, I feel like one of the things that could probably get into their way is if they are not cautious when it comes to being defensive minded and what i mean by that is they're very good offensively but a lot of teams have been able to pick them apart when they have to play defensively meaning when they don't have ball control and when they are forced to make catches now that's not to say they cannot make catches because they are able to make catches but their main playing style is offensively so you got two teams playing very offensively minded and honestly, it can go either way. Like I said, these games are normally pretty close. I feel like the biggest difference in determining who's going to win this particular matchup is which team is actually going to make the fewest mistakes. Because I already know both teams, right off the back, they're going to be swinging for defenses. Like, I already know this. JMU want to get a bad taste out of their mouth. All right? Like, they travel from Harrisonburg up to um, Old Town, um, Pennsylvania. They're currently, you know, resting, getting a good night's sleep. They're not trying to go 0-3. They're not even trying to go 1-2. And, and they're not even thinking about trying to go 2-1. Like, they want to let people know, we are the Dukes, and we're not playing around. On the other hand, Penn State, they want to use this game as a statement game to kind of get them going in the right direction. All right. Now for the other game that's on court number two, because that was court number one. So the other game taking place court number two is 
a rivalry that is very well known in Maryland, which is Towson versus Maryland. And Towson is, in my humble opinion, like the most balanced team. Offensively, defensively, like as a unit, like they are all around, you know, they have the goods and they are prime to compete for another national championship. You know, the best team on the East Coast and they're currently 6-0. They're currently 6-0. They don't have a loss in their resume. Um, some of the criticism with this particular team, again, not my personal opinion, so don't come after me. You can go after the people who said these things. But the criticism from the content team, the e-board team, and some of the teams around the league is that Towson has not been able to travel outside of its region. Now, once again, for those of you who know me very, very well, you know I'm from VCU, and I do, to a certain degree, have an East Coast bias. But also at the same time, I understand this, so I'm not really going to be hardcore East Coast bias. You know, I'm going to try to be as neutral as possible. Towson had opportunities that they were supposed to travel, but then other schools dropped the ball because the students around the campus could not stop catching COVID. So Towson, unfortunately, is in unfortunate circumstances, so they just have to do what they can. So, and they're going to be playing against Maryland, who is currently, if I remember correctly, um, one and five. And their only win is against VCU, and VCU is currently winless. I believe they're only five right now, or only six. And two completely different play style. Towson is very balanced, but they prefer to play offense, and they prefer to push their opponents to the back line. And Maryland is very defensive-minded. They like to play at a slow pace, and they don't want to go at a fast pace unless it is favorable for them. That's just how they like to play. So for Maryland to win, they really will have to slow the pace of Towson. And they can do that by capitalizing on the catches and really forcing Towson to go for single throws. But Towson can really earn the advantage very quickly if they just dominate their opponents with their team throws um, and their transition skills because they're one of the best teams in the country when it comes to that. And it can really make life very, very uncomfortable when you have to go up against that. So, um, Towson, they just got to utilize team throws more, and they should be fine. In Maryland, um, they just got to play together as a team, and they should be fine. I won't be surprised early on. This will be a very, very close game for either team. Don't be surprised if it gets a little carry away or if it remains close because these two teams are very familiar with each other. All right, so in the second game on court one, we're going to have Penn State versus Towson. Now, in my humble opinion, this is one of the games of the day. One of them. You can say it's 1A or 1B, but it's definitely one of them because both teams want to play against each other. Penn State feels like they are this close to taking over Towson. And Towson's like, nah, you're still not on our level. We respect you. We understand what y'all are doing. We appreciate the fact that you are a really, really good team. And we're not going to take that for granted. But respectfully, you're not on our level. So I can feel that this game is probably going to be somewhat of an emotional game could be somewhat of an emotional game. It can go back and forth. So, again, Penn State is going to utilize their athletic abilities and their fast tempo to force Towson to be in a very uncomfortable situation, to play faster than they would like to. Towson, what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to capitalize on the mistakes of Penn State by being too aggressive and try to kill them off early and often in the transition game to make them feel uncomfortable from making those mental mistakes. So again, it's going to be two teams really trying to go after each other and really trying to balance um, the tempo to a large extent. 
You know, in the other game, court two, it's going to be Maryland versus JMU. And it's going to be just two completely different op. It's going to be two opposite playing style. Maryland's going to have to find ways to slow the tempo down, play as a team, and really utilize team throws and strategy in a very strategic manner. And JMU, respectfully, I'm just going to tell you straight up, they're going for headshots. They're going for headshots. Just straight up. Early and often. Yeah. You might hear some people say balls deep from them. You might. I'm not going to say it. But you'll probably hear them say it. And they're going for headshots. And then they're probably going to ask me for the videos so that way they can post it on IG. I know how this works. Yeah, Jamie is going to be straight offensively minded all the way. Maryland got to figure out a way how to survive that and play to their advantage. All right. And um, some of the key players from Maryland and from Towson, because I forgot to mention that. Um, some of the key players from Towson that we need to be watching for is going to be Captain um, Griffin Bash, who is a lefty, a really good one at that. The Freedom Brothers, we got Hunter, as well we got Jake, Kyle Strong. Also, watch out for Garrett. Number He's probably going to wear number one or number 22. My man got a cannon of an arm. He is, and he definitely enjoys giving people headshots. Um, same thing with Tommy, number 10. Um, yeah. Headshots. They're not playing no games. Also, watch out for Tommy Malone, number 21. Really good catcher. Sneaky, sneaky athletic. Do not be surprised if he will catch you sleeping, all right? Um, and let's see. And for Maryland... Um, we got head captain, Daniel, my man, Daniel. And, um, we also have Bryce as well. She's a really good catcher and she got a very good arm for her. Very good arm as a player. And I'll also watch out for Connor. I want to watch out for Connor, number 73. All right. Uh, last but not least, I will probably say the second Game of the day, uh, Jamie versus Towson. If you're on the East Coast, you already know what this means. If you're not from the East Coast, just know that there's a lot of respect between these two teams. But um, when they're on the court, they just don't like each other. They don't. They have a lot of respect for each other off the court. But on the court, it's going to be very confrontational. It's always very tense all the time. Strategy for this game for both teams is very, very simple. Get ball control and push your opponent to the back line and make him feel uncomfortable. Strategy for winning, make the least mistakes. That's about it. Seriously, like that that's it for both teams. Don't make mistakes, because the other team will capitalize. And they will go for headshots. And both teams most likely will be asking for my footage of the game afterwards. That's just how it works. All right. Um and then the other game at 1230 on court two is gonna be Penn State versus Maryland. And I feel like that game would be less confrontational. Less confrontational. Less confrontational. Again, Maryland plays at a slow pace, but they play well as a team, so they do have strategy. Um, Penn State, this will be their third game, so they might be a little bit tired, so they might be playing at a slower pace. But they're going to try to play as aggressive for as long as they can and as often as they can. So again, I'm not making any predictions in the games at all. I'm just here just to do live streaming and commentating. That's pretty much about it. Um, the general consensus around the league 
is that Towson will most likely go undefeated. And Maryland will go 0-3. Again, these are not my personal opinions. These are not my personal feelings. This is just how people feel within the league. So some of the storylines that I'm thinking about is this. Towson, do they need to go 3-0 or could they afford to go 2-1? Obviously, if they go 3-0, you know, going to be business as usual. Very dominant, very fashionable, you know, come in, come out, easy money, right? But if they go 2-1, and one, and let's just say they lose either to JMU or to Penn State, People are going to be looking at them a little funny. Just a little bit. Me, my personal opinion is not going to change. Still a championship team. Still a championship team. But if they lose a game, folks are going to be looking at them a little crazy. Just a little bit crazy. For Penn State, if they go 2-1, and one, folks will be like, eh. All right. That's cool. They're not going to be surprised and not going to be shocked. But if they go 3 0, folks could be like, ooh, wait a minute now. This is a little interesting. It's a little interesting. But if they go 1 and 2, you're going to have some very serious parody coming up real soon. The biggest storyline, in my humble opinion, is going to be James. In my humble opinion, they have the most to lose. And it feels weird for me even saying that. I have nothing but the highest respect towards JMU. They have been dominant for over a decade. It is weird for me to even utter out of my own mouth that they are currently the third best team on the East Coast. Now, to be fair to them, they had a difficult schedule. They travel out to Ohio, went 0 3 and play against some really good opponents. They play against Cincinnati, Ohio State, and of course, GV, known as Grand Valley. So give them some credit for traveling, because that's not an easy thing to do, especially with COVID, and especially with teams not really wanting to travel outside of state that much. I feel like Jamie had the most to lose because people don't believe that they have what it takes. And me personally, I, I play against JMU too many times over the year to think that is the case. Best case scenario for them is go 3-0 and and to really shut a lot of people up. Even going 2-1 and one this tournament would be extremely helpful. But they cannot go 1-2. And they definitely cannot go 0-3. Because that's not going to look good. At all. Maryland, I feel like they have the most to gain. Nobody believes in them. Nobody. Outside of Maryland, nobody believes in them. Nobody. And that's okay. Because they actually want you to sleep on them. Yeah. They want you to sleep on them. They want you to underestimate them. They want you to be disrespectful towards them. They want you to be falling asleep on the job. They want you to do that. Because they always find a way to get better and better and better at every single tournament. And for some unknown reason that even I can explain, they find ways to make themselves relevant. And at Nationals, I don't know, man. They find ways to make it happen. They're playing with house money. They legitimately has nothing to lose at all. So they can really use this tournament as a test run for future tournaments. Try some new things. Try some strategy. Give a change up. Play up the pace. Heck, even fool me. They can do that. 
they have the luxury of doing that. But yeah, with that being said, that's pretty much my analysis of the tournament. Should be a good time. And um, yeah, I'm probably predicting at least seven headshots throughout the day. Should be a good time. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get this music back on. Yeah, go ahead and get this music back on. So for those of you who don't know already, Cincinnati is your Ohio Dodgeball Champions going 3-0 today, all right? Got some upcoming tournaments in the future. Uh, do not forget about the Michigan Dodgeball Cup. It's going to be taking place at East Lansing, Michigan next Saturday. Also, don't forget about um, the, the UWP tournament that should be coming about two weeks on this Saturday. And of course, one of my favorite tournaments, the war. That's gonna be fucking cool. That's gonna be taking place at University of Akron. In about three weeks. It's gonna be a two-day tournament. Ten teams are coming out. And there's a very good possibility that ready to stream. It's gonna be out there. We're gonna have a great time. Also, the Jamie Beast tournament is also on that same weekend as well. It's not going to be too And with that being said, I am Chuck D. Drake Ford, your director of Eternal Affairs, also known as Ray Green. And I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And I hope that you enjoy it.